Hello and welcome to Jamhammer. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to paint up the new plastic Death Corps of Krieg models from the Warhammer 40k Kill Team Octarius box. We're going to be using a really quick and simple scheme that can be done using just seven paints. So you'll only need a blue, black, white, brown, yellow and red, as well as a metallic gunmetal paint. I'll be using the paints from this Vallejo starter set that you can find in the affiliate link below, along with all the other tools and bits used throughout this video. Along the way, I'll also be making use of a few optional colours that you can find in this paint set too, just to add a bit more variety to these minis, but these are by no means necessary. The Octarius box, or the individual set for the Death Corps of Krieg, provides us with parts to make 10 of these veteran guardsmen, who have access to several weapons like a plasma gun and a flamethrower, as well as options to build these as specialists with unique abilities like the Zealot, who can buff units to crit on fives, or the Spotter, who can relay the sergeant's orders and grant extra action points to others. Unfortunately, the sprues are built in such a way that we can't build all the options available to us, especially with all the weapons options for the gunners. Even worse, two of the guardsmen have to be built as generic veterans, with no perks except a group activation of two. This is a real shame, as the Orc Commando set allows you to make one of each specialist, two standard boys, as well as the bomb squig and the grot, and then you can just pick ten from the twelve to field in a game. As such, if you want to maximise the options afforded to you with the Death Corps kill team, we'll have to be a bit creative with the sculpts and throw out the assembly rules. Well, actually for most of the minis that you see in this video, I use the standard assembly, but having used the two crouching legs on the sniper and the demolitions veteran, I ended up making the running medic sculpt here with the parts that's supposed to be used on the crouching medic, mostly personal preference because I really like the wrist saw and the vial filled backpack and think that it looks pretty good with the guy running and filling up a syringe as he sprints across the kill zone to help a wounded vet. Similarly, I ended up using the spotter tools here on what should have been a standard veteran model to look like he's standing and surveying, ready to call out a mortar barrage or relay the location of a sneaky commando. Finally, I didn't get any footage at this time, but at the brown paint section, you can see the confidant veteran I made using the rest of the spare pieces to create a unit with pistol thrown back and chainsaw clattering down to hack up some boys. So, with our minis assembled, we're going to apply a layer of prime from a spray can. I'm using black here as I want a nice dark base to mute the subsequent paint to keep it suitably grim dark, but feel free to use whatever prime you have to hand. Right, let's get some paint on these and we're going to begin with a layer of blue on the great coats of our Astra Militarium. Thin whichever blue you're using on a palette so it flows nicely and apply this to the coats of the minis. We can really just throw this on at this stage as we'll be painting over most of the other areas later on so there's no need to be too neat but just make sure that you get all the bits such as under the arms, the creases in the cloth especially where it's pinned back, the collars under the helmets, and the coattails of the standing minis. I found that, even thinned down, this Vallejo blue paint was opaque enough to only need one coat applying, but let it dry, and if it still looks patchy or streaky, then go back and apply another thin coat to all of your models. Next, mix together some of your black and white paints to the desired grey colour on your palette. Or, if you have one, use a grey paint. Thin it down again, and apply this to the guardsman's trousers, as well as the cuffs of the coat. Again, this was opaque enough using the thinned grey from that starter set to only require one coat, but try not to be tempted to keep your paint too thick. You always want to opt for two thin coats to preserve the detail on your minis. Make sure to get up under the coats here, and if you slip onto the blue cloth, no worries, we can either cover this up now if your blue paint is still wet, or we'll cover over it later. Next up, grab a dark brown and paint the shoes and gas masks of your models. We're keeping the cloth area between the trousers and shoes blank for now, so we can really throw this on with reckless abandon. With the masks though, try not to slip over onto the blue. Since the collar is right there, it's no worries if it goes over and we can touch it up later.
Mix some of your white into this brown until you have an off-white bone colour. Or, if you have access to a bespoke cream colour, thin some of this down on your palette, and we want to catch any cloth and paper on the minis. So, the book and rolled up tent on the Zealot Veteran here. Uh, quite a few of these guardsmen have these rolls on top of their backpacks, so go through and catch all of those. We also want to get any skulls, such as on the cool mask on the demo vet here, and there's one on the shoulder of the hardened vet if you're using that unit. We also want to get all of the cloth reps that we left blank between the trousers and shoes on each of the minis, so pick those out carefully if you can, but again, we can tidy this up later if we do slip over. Now this being such a light colour, we'll likely need at least a second coat of this paint. As you can see on the sergeant here, that black prime is still showing through on the backpack, so another thin coat should cover that. If you have access to two shades of brown, such as a dark brown and a leather brown, switch to that leather colour now and catch all the pouches, as well as the ones on the backpack, any straps, belts, and the breathing unit on the front of all the minis. Now there are plenty of optional pouches, flasks, etc. on the sprues, so your minis could be really inundated with all these. If you don't have a leather brown, add a little yellow to the dark brown that you used for the shoes and mask to make one. Or, you could just use this same dark brown, no problem too. For the straps and belts, you might find it useful to switch to a smaller detail brush. Although, I still slipped over a lot. Also, be on the lookout for some hidden straps under the arms that are holding the flak armour in place over the shoulders. If you have a dark green paint, you can thin this down and use it on some of those pouches just to mix up the colours on these units. This isn't a necessary stage, but it can add a bit of variety, so I'm going to use it on the big central portion of the backpacks, as well as the radio set here on the comms vet. I'm also going to put a coat over the flak jacket on the demo expert and the explosives riddled backpack too. Grab your white paint next, thin it down, and carefully try to get it into the centre of the breathing units. We can also use this to put down a base coat on the coils on any plasma weapons, like the sergeant's pistol and the gunner's plasma gun, and then we can put a thin gloss of blue over later for a quick glow effect. We can do the same with any other glowy bits too, like the readout on the medic's wrist screen. Get your red paint and very carefully catch the dial on the breathing units, as well as the eyes on the masks. I'm going to be using this paint to uh, put a layer on the vials on the medic's backpack too, so it looks like vials of blood sloshing around in there. If you built the signal vet with your kit, you can also use this red paint on the flare rounds attached to the chest of their coat. If you wanted a bit more variety, you can use a light green paint or add some yellow paint to your dark green and pick out even more pouches or bits with this colour, like I'm doing on the sergeant's backpack here, as well as the binoculars and shovel handle on the spotter mini, and these pouches on these minis. Again, not essential, but just mixing up the colours a little bit. Another essential one now with the metallics. Get a gunmetal colour and we want to thin this just a little and apply it to all the metal parts of the minis, so weapons, tools, belts and all that. I'm going to catch the wrist blade and syringe of the medic bottle with this colour for example, as well as the bayonet I put on his las gun, and then just the barrel, stock, clip, trigger and coil of the rifles. The rest of the weapon carriage can stay black. We want to go through all of our models, one by one, and do the same. So this confidant, going to paint the teeth on the chain sword, and the clip around the carriage of the bolt pistol, and the capsule underneath the backpack with this gunmetal colour. Getting that belt buckle too, as well as the metallic tips of the rebreather unit. Lastly, very carefully, try to paint the metal rims on the mask too. Although, if you're anything like me, this will need some serious tidying up with brown paint later. 
optional step here, but if you have a gold paint, we can use this on a few of the fancy items on these units, like the Aquilas on the helmets and on the Zealot's rosary. We can also pick up the little skulls on backpacks and on weapons like this lasgun. We can use this gold colour on the sergeant's power sword too, to make it into a suitably ornate imperial weapon, capable of commanding respect on the battlefield. We'll pick out the skulls on the pistol too, and we can use this gold to pick out the aquilas on the belt buckles, as well as the buttons on their greatcoats. But all these parts can just as easily be painted with gunmetal too, if that's the only metallic paint that you have. Much like this stage, feel free to just use the gunmetal, but I'm using a Citadel Rune Lord brass paint that's not included in that Vallejo set, just to add some variety. If you have a brass paint, you can do the same on the comms, flares, and the aerial on the backpack. Or on the spotter, you can pick out the speaker unit with a brass paint too. The cup on the sergeant's backpack is going to be brass as well. Next up, go through each of your minis and tidy up any of those slippages you had, or paint any areas you may have forgotten in the initial painting stage. I'm going to grab my black paint and go over the areas we're leaving black in this paint scheme, which is the gun housing, shoulder plates, gloves, and helmets. Next up, I'm going to paint over those areas on the coats that I slipped up on, like the spotter here, where I went over with the brown paint, trying to paint the last gun strap. I also noticed the metal plates on the back of the gloves here, so I'm going over these now with that gunmetal paint. Finally, we're going to apply some wash just to add shading and depth to the models. I'm using a 1 to 1 to 1 mix of brown wash, black wash and water, so using equal parts of each. I'm using armour painter washes, so that's dark tone and strong tone and we just want to apply this liberally all over the minis. Just really go to town on them and get this all over your models. Just be on the lookout for it pooling in large flat areas, such as the folds and creases in the greatcoats. If it starts to pool, it'll leave a weird tide mark, so move it away with your brush or wick it away with a spare dry brush. Go through each of your models in turn and leave them to dry fully for a few hours and we should have something like this. Now these minis are all painted up now, they could be used in your games of kill team, and they'll look so much better than the bare grey plastic. We've used a really simple paint scheme, but managed to add a lot of life to these models, and even added a few extra bits of variety on the accessories, while still making them look like a unified kill team. If you wanted to add a bit more detail to the minis though, Grab your blue paint again and add just a little bit of white paint. Thin this down a bit more than last time and go through your models catching any raised areas of cloth and being careful not to slip into the recesses where the wash we've applied has collected. With the larger bits of cloth, paint in streaks that flow with the direction of the cloth like this so that it looks more authentic and try to think where the light might naturally be hitting the mini like on the upper side of the cloth stretched over the bionic arm of this hardened veteran. Work through each of your minis in turn, applying this and allow it to dry. We can also really thin this blue down into a gloss and paint over the white areas on the plasma coils. This should dry with that white still showing through and create sort of a basic glow effect on the weapons. Go back to your grey paint now and do the same lighten it just a little and apply it to the raised areas. So on the knees and edges of cuffs, as well as along the crests of the creases in the cloth. Work through each of your models doing this and again try to avoid this colour falling into the contours where the dark wash has settled. Get your brown paint, add a little yellow and repeat on the dark brown areas, so catching those raised parts of the shoe leather. as well as the cheeks on the gas masks. We can also highlight anything here we've painted with the dark brown colour, such as the detonator on the demo expert figure here. Add in even more yellow, or add a little yellow to your leather brown, and catch any raised areas on those straps and pouches. 
We can also use this color to trace out the edges on the rebreathing unit on the center of each mini and add just a bit more depth to their belts. Using your off-white color, we can do the same with those cloth areas too. Now, since this is such a light color, it's probably been darkened quite a lot by the wash stage, so there's no need to lighten this anymore. Just using the same base color will be enough to lighten it at this point. So you want to get those rolled up pieces on the backpacks, but also try to pick out the edges of the cloth wraps on their shoes too, trying not to fall into the recesses and leaving those areas in shadow. We'll want to re-establish the mid-tone on the paper parts too, like the map that the comms veteran is holding here, as that's become very muddy with the wash. Using a little yellow, mix it into your red to create a warm orange colour, and just add a little of this to any parts we've painted red, such as the vials on the medic here. Very carefully add a little dab of this to the goggles and the gas masks of your minis too. Going to add a line or two of this along these flares too as a highlight, and again, just a touch on the eyes. Add some white into your black so you get a very dark grey, and apply this to edges of weapons and armour to break up the flatness of this colour and add a little depth here too. So just a bit along edges and areas where the light could be hitting will create a more interesting appearance of these areas. If you have a silver paint, we can use this now to catch sharp edges and areas where the light will be glinting off the metal, as well as any parts that could have been scuffed on the guardsman too, like on the medic's blade and bayonet here. Or the sergeant's accessories that could have been scraped against a wall, as well as the sword and the edges of the plasma pistol. And we're pretty much done at this point, so you might want to base your models now. I used a basing kit that I'll leave in the affiliate links below to simulate the board that you get with the Kill Team Octarius box set. I go into this in more detail on the Commandos painting video that I'll leave a link to here too. Essentially though, to layer of PVA glue, dip into modelling sand, bit more PVA and add on some cork bits to look like rocks, leave to dry, and then cover all this over with our dark brown paint. Once this is dry too, we want to do a very heavy dry brush of our off-white bone colour, and that's about it. Touch up the edges of the base with that brown too, but overall, a really simple and easy to do base that does look quite a lot like that board. And here are our Death Corps of Krieg veterans, ready to carry out tactical operations. We've only used a few colours in this paint scheme, but adding a little yellow or white into those base colours has also created some nice highlights. Now. Get out there and rid the Imperium of the Orc Menace. For the Emperor. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the bell to be notified of new videos being released. Let me know in the comments below how you're finding the new version of Kill Team, and if you prefer playing as these veterans, bringing all kinds of ancillary support and firepower to bear against the green tide, or if you're more of an Orc Commandos player, sneaking through Imperial lines with choppers at the ready. We'll hopefully be releasing some battle reports soon, using the contents from this Kill Team box set, so keep an eye out for more Octarius content coming soon to the Jamhammer channel. Thanks again for watching.